What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an awesome day. As promised on our last video today, we're planting sweet potatoes. But not these. We'll be planting these. We've been receiving a decent amount of messages lately. People want to know what can I plant that can take the heat. And I know some of you that are in the middle or northern part of the country are just now getting your gardens in. But for us down here in the south, it won't be long before it's too hot to grow most of the things we have growing now. And there's only a few crops that can take the extreme heat down here. One of those being okra, the other one being sweet potatoes. Peppers usually make it through the summer. But a lot of the stuff we have growing now will eventually succumb to the heat here in the next month or so. Now sweet potatoes are in the morning glory family. They're not really related to Irish potatoes, which are in the nightshade family. So as far as rotation goes, you can, once you've dug your Irish potatoes, you can plant sweet potatoes in the same plot. Shouldn't have any issues doing that. Now the Irish potatoes, we cut up the potatoes and we plant little pieces that have eyes on them. With sweet potatoes, you don't want to plant this. You want to plant these right here, which are called slips. So the way slips are grown, and I've seen it done several different ways, but the way the guys at Steel Plant Company do it, they have these big high tunnel greenhouses from what I understand, and they lay out these sweet potatoes in this huge massive bed, just stack them in there side by side, cover them with a light layer of soil, and then you'll start to get these little sprouts off of them. Those are called slips. And then once those slips get a certain height or length, they'll pluck those slips off bag them up like this and then ship them to their customers so if you plant this you're just going to be growing slips you'll have a bunch of slips coming off this potato and everything will be overcrowded and you won't really make a good harvest you want to make sure you plant these slips like we see here now on that last video right after the ups guy delivered these i took them put them in a bucket of water to kind of rehydrate them a little bit they're in a lot better shape now. They weren't in terrible shape when we got them, but we can tell those leaves have a lot more vigor to them, a lot more cell turgor, I guess would be the technical term. All the plant cells are filled with water now, so we got good rigid leaves here. Everything's kind of not wilty. So that's what I like to do before I plant them. If you don't do that, you have to give them a good bit of water after you plant them to get them up and going and they can look kind of pitiful. So. You know, take your time, let them soak in water. A day, I've let them soak as much as three days. Just kind of refresh the water so it doesn't become stagnant. But you want these guys looking nice and healthy when you put them in the ground. So this is the plot where we're going to be putting those sweet potato slips. Got those peas out of there. Got some weeds out of there. Got it nice and clean. I did leave this kale here just because it's doing so well. Still doing really well. Still harvesting. Still eating a lot of this stuff. And I know at some point, if this kale keeps going, those sweet potato vines may kind of climb all over it and take it over. But we're gonna have kale until that happens. And one step I had to do, which I didn't really wanna do because it made it take more time, was I had to come in here with a tiller and cultivate fairly deep where my rows are gonna be. This soil here, because it's been so dry and hot, was pretty compacted. I could tell when I was running through here with a wheel hoe that uh, it was gonna be tough to make a planting furrow and those sweet potatoes wouldn't grow very well in that hard soil. They like, you know, a little bit of fluffy soil, kind of like Irish potatoes, any root crop does. So what I did was, I didn't measure this off, I just kind of took the tiller and ran through here where my rows are gonna be, just one strip there, kind of like a strip till, so to say. I did run the sprinkler on this overnight before I did that, just so I could cultivate a little deeper. That dirt was hard, 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 hard. So we got four rows here, and I got one row that's gonna go on the other side of this kale over here. So I'm just kind of working around this kale and those vines may climb all over it eventually. We'll just see what happens there. But we've got them fairly, you know, equally spaced. Not measured or anything, it'll be good enough. Now I left that drip line right there 
because it's underneath that kale and if I pull it up I'm gonna be pulling up my kale but I took the main line off I'm not gonna use drip on these sweet potatoes I got that rolled up there I can reuse that on any of these other plots that are the same size out here in the dream garden I have used drip on sweet potatoes before when I planted them way over there kind of in front of the corn last year they were in amongst several different other types of vegetables that I didn't want to overhead water so I used drip then and it worked pretty good on these plots here they're 30 by 35 it's a perfect size for my little tripod sprinkler there and I can keep them watered easily like that no need to use drip and these guys don't need a whole lot of water so I can just give them a splash every now and then so I'll use drip if I'm amongst other stuff that I don't want to get a whole lot of leaf moisture on but if I'm just planting a whole plot of them like this I'll use that tripod so as with everything we plant we want to amend the furrow at planting put a little pre-plant fertilizer down we're going to be using this nature safe 855 here so I'm going to get the wheel hoe make a furrow in the middle of these little tilled lanes and we'll sprinkle some of this down there before we plant our sweet potatoes Worth falling for Oh, and with open arms I'll carry yours All right, we got that amended and normally I would leave that furrow open and close it as I planted those sweet potato slips but I'm going to try something a little different this time something I think will be a little bit easier if it works something I've seen done we're going to try to just poke those puppies down in there with a stick so we'll see how that works here in a minute so as far as the varieties we're planting i've got four different varieties from steel and then i got one more variety coming from somewhere else i'll tell you about that in a minute so several videos ago i told you guys they helped you know me determine which varieties we're going to plant in this plot i told you i was going to definitely grow the georgias yet i always grow that one but wanted some suggestions on what else to try varieties i've never try, tried or grown before i've grown beauregard covington those are pretty similar to the georgia jet in my opinion i really like covington but the georgia jet just kind of barely edges it so that's kind of our standby the one we always grow a lot of people wanted me to grow some of these uh bush type sweet potatoes so what I did, I just called up there, talked to Miss Kay at Steel, and kind of gave her a, a list of all the varieties you guys suggested, and she told me what they actually had available. There was one called O. Henry that somebody suggested, and they didn't really have that one available. So I got what they had available in addition to my Georgia Jets here. So we've got two of the bush type sweet potatoes. We've got the bunch Puerto Ricos, and we've got the vardamans here and from what i understand the vardaman has a really 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 pretty interior color on it it's supposed to be the kind of brightest you know color sweet potato out there so really looking forward to that and then we've got this white flesh sweet potato here called murasaki so it's the outside of it's purple the inside of it's white it's supposed to be really nutritious really good for you so looking forward to trying that variety i believe that variety was developed at lsu called Murasaki 29 actually has a patent on it so those are four varieties but we got five rows out here so we're gonna plant a row of each of these I think these bunches have around 25 or so slips in it I went ahead and got two bunches just to make sure I'd have enough I'll find somebody to give the rest of these slips to for that other row the row that's on this side of the kale kind of by itself and I got to get my notes for this so I can remember it so my buddy Tim in North Carolina, he got access to this new experimental sweet potato variety. It's supposed to be pretty similar to Covington. It was developed in NC State and it's just got a lot of disease and pest resistance. It's called NCO4-531. Supposedly once they get the patent field, they're going to give it an actual name. And maybe you'll see some of the sweet potato slip suppliers start to carry it. But uh, we don't have that one with us today. I think he'll probably be sending us that in the next few weeks or so and we'll get those in the ground when they come. Down here, we can plant sweet potatoes. I planted them as late as July before and been just fine. You just need about 100 days of good hot weather is all you need. So if you live up north, you probably got a much smaller window for growing them. I'd actually prefer to plant them in July. That way I'm harvesting 
when the temperatures have kind of cooled off a little bit in fall but it's hard to get slips that late so lately the last few years i've been having to get my slips in may and that puts me harvesting right in the middle of the dog days of summer but it is what it is um, if you grow your own slips you may have a little more flexibility as your planting time or for your planting time there but we're just going to plant when we can get the slips down here i'll give you guys a little closer look at these things so they come wrapped up like this and they put some of the stuff around them. I'm not really what it's called, but it does help kind of conserve the moisture there. And we suck these two so they're good and healthy. And you just kind of pull these apart. So that's a slip right there. And you can see roots already growing off the side of it there. So we'll just put this in the ground. You can put it straight down like that. A lot of people like to lay it down like that. Either way works. But you want to plant them deep. You want to at least cover them up. To right there they'll form roots all along here we can see some roots forming way up there so you want to bury them good and we might even come back and heal them later once they get going now you want to plant these guys about a foot apart but i'm going to do a little different uh, as far as how i put them in the soil than i have before usually like i said earlier i would leave that further open lay them in there cover it up and kind of leave that sticking out of the ground i'm going to use a stick and try to poke them in there to keep me from having to get down on my knees and scoot along the road so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come along here and i'm going to lay them out like this kind of connect and once i poke them in the soil they should be about a foot apart because all these slips are you know approximately a foot long you don't have to get super exact with this so i'm going to lay them down like that and then we'll take our stick and try to just poke them in the soil there and maybe they'll cover up by themselves i've seen plenty of people do it this way it looks like it works we're gonna give it a try all right so i've got me a stick here i'm going to use i'm going to use this kind of flat end as opposed to this pointy end you'll hear people talk about doing this with a tobacco stick and let's hope this works because i'm kind of married to this system at this point since i've already closed up my furrow but what i've seen people do is just take these things and they just kind of poke them down in the soil like that right there And the soil kind of covers over the top of them. Keeps you from having to bend over and put these things in the dirt. Looks like it works pretty good. Come, rain or shine. I'll cover you up and calm the skies. I really, really like that. I feel like an idiot for getting on my knees and planting sweet potato slips so many years. I don't know why I haven't tried this before but that man that's just so much faster so much easier didn't even break a sweat probably not gonna have to take a shower after this now now there is a little bit of technique to it i learned about halfway down the road you got to kind of poke it down in the right spot to get everything buried and get the plant to kind of stand up but it doesn't take long at all to get the hang of it so that's my sweet potato slip planting tool right there works like a charm Let's get the rest of these planted. As long as you are mine, I'll be there when you need me. You can count on it every time. It won't always be easy. Just as sure as the sun will rise, I'll be there when you need me. With every tear that falls from. Well, that is officially record time for me planting four rows of sweet potatoes. So much faster doing it that way. And it just works out really well when you poke them with that stick. You get the hang of it. The plants end up standing right up. And when you lay them down there, elbow to elbow like we did, they end up being about a foot apart. Man, I like it when a plan comes together. Now, one thing to note about doing it that way with a stick, I would have never been able to do that had I not tilled those rows there so you need some pretty fluffy soil be able to pull it off with that stick there but what was nice is we didn't have to till the whole plot we just tilled those lanes where we planted those sweet potatoes don't have to worry about this other stuff this other stuff would get covered up with 
vegetation for those plants pretty soon shade out all those weeds kind of works like a cover crop i planted these in alphabetical order so i can remember what i got here so we got georgia jets we got murasaki we got puerto rico and we got vardaman here and we're going to put that experimental variety from nc state right over here whenever we get those in now to get a good survival rate on your slips which is not unusual for all of them to survive you really need to pour the water to these guys after you plant them till they get some roots established and then they're pretty heat tolerant after that whether you're using drip irrigation or overhead just make sure you water them good after you plant them now i've got my drip running way on the other side over there on my watermelons right now so i'm about to unhook that hook it up this tripod let that run for a couple of hours and that should get them nice and settled there now as far as fertility goes the one thing you don't want to do is give them a lot of nitrogen because you end up making a lot of vines and not a whole lot of sweet potatoes i recommend giving them a balanced fertilizer early that's pretty much standard a lot of places recommend that whatever that balanced formulation is whatever you've got on hand we use 855 which isn't exactly balanced but it's close enough and then once they get growing potatoes need an extra shot of potassium so i don't have any of that on hand i'm gonna have to try to find some murate of potash or sulfate of potash something like that you could use wood ash as well find some extra potassium kind of side dress with that to help that actual sweet potato formation so let me know if any of you guys out there have already planted your sweet potatoes and if you haven't got slips yet make sure you go to sweetpotatoplant.com and get those before they sell out if you've ever tried any of these varieties obviously a lot of you have tried the georgia yet tried any of the vardaman puerto rico mirasaki tried any of those let me know how they did for you did you like the taste were they worth growing or is it just kind of one and done deal if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe ring the bell like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life